Hey, this is Peggy with another quickie little impromptu illustrator tutorial. This one obviously is going to be about global color swatches and why they are fucking awesome. All right, so we've got some text on the screen, right? And it's in this black. You know, I don't like that black. It's boring. I think it should be red instead. So we grab the arrow and we select it and dum de dum de dum now it's red. But these other two are still are still black because they're separate objects, and that's a pain in the ass. And in fact, let's undo that. Let's say we had, I don't know, oh, a picture of a flower. Um, actually, that's not a flower. Let's say we had a picture of a crazy bird here. Do -do 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 -do. Okay, we've got this crazy, weird-ass bird, and we've got some text on why global sw color swatches are fucking awesome. Now. And just to make life more interesting, we'll put a blue rectangle behind it. So we have things in two colors. It's mostly black and, you know, it's mostly black. So we could, in this case, select all and then deselect the box and change the color to change them all. But, you know, that's a fucking pain in the ass, isn't it? I mean, you know, especially if you've got stuff on five different layers that are all locked off. So that then doesn't work. You know, you want to play around and you want to not have to see, you want to play around with the colors. And also, of course, if you've got a gradient in the mix, that's going to be even worse because then to say, if you want to change all of this black into red, you would have to select all of these shapes and change them into red and you miss one, so you have to go back and change it to the same color using the eyedropper. And then you go into this object, and it's like you have to figure out how to get the color from here onto here. It's a fucking pain in the ass, right? You know, okay, if you're using color swatches, norm using normal color swatches, you've got a little help because you can drag one from the color swatches into, into the gradient stuff. But it's still just a goddamn pain in the ass, right? So, here's what I do. Nuke all this stuff. And start fresh. So, we start out. Let's say we want to have blue for the sky, right? We start out and we drag it into the from the color into the swatches. And then we double click on it. And we give it a name, Sky, and we check Global. And we'll make our big rectangle. And now we already have the have a black swatch, so we'll just use that. So again, we type Y Global Color Swatches are fucking awesome. One. Ha ha. And, um... Draw a little happy face, because, you know, he's like, D ah, I'm, he's just so full of the awesomeness of global color swatches, he can't contain himself. And let's put a big gradient, gradient circle behind him. It's like this black to this blue. All right. Do, do, do. Okay, um, gradient rectangle then. You know, this is not great art, it's just me fucking around to show this. Now, I can lock this whole layer and change all these colors, thanks to the magic of global swatches. See, these swatches have a little white rect a little white triangle in the corner to tell you they're global. They're not just a normal color swatch that you made by going doop doo do and dragging it on in there. Alright, so what we do is we double-click on this black swatch again, we can turn on preview, and I prefer to do my color working in HSB because it's easier to think. You can use CMYK or RGB or whatever you like. We start playing with it, and, um, oh, see, I fucked up because I'm showing you how to do this the wrong way by accidentally drawing these things in non-global, so we'll just remedy that. Now these are all in this black color swatch. And let's double check on this. That is, um, 
That is not a proper global color swatch. Okay, there we go. You can tell because when it's selected, instead of showing you the sliders, it gives it just the name and it lets you have tints of it. So, we can lock the layer off and double click on that black swatch. Go to HSB, turn on preview, and we are changing it. Now, of course, in a trivial demonstration like this, it's not so impressive. But on the other hand, notice, I don't like this blue either. Let's say purple. And now that gradient changed along with everything else because it's a global swatch. If I was doing other things, if I was doing um, select same fill color, well, I mean, if I was doing, those are good for selecting lots of things too. But if I was doing select same fill of color and I had things that used the same color as a stroke, then I'd have to select those separately and I'd have to go into every single gradient that used this color and change it. And, you know, it'd take forever. It'd take a long, long time and I'd be bored. This way, I don't have to think about it. It takes seconds and I can do any color scheme I like at the very end of a piece if I want to by just tweaking. For instance, let's close this, go to a piece that I have in progress. This is something that I sketched out direct in Illustrator, and I've got shapes that I've drawn under it. And you notice again, I've got all these different colors going on, and they are just, but they're really just the same three colors. Um, you can have, you can draw a shape in, you can draw a shape in a color and then you can make it a lighter tint of it by just dragging the one slider you have. So we draw a couple of shapes in different tints of the same color. And I change, I turn on preview and change this and they all change and they stay the same tint but the color changes with it. So in a matter of seconds we can completely change the color scheme of this entire drawing. Let's say we want it to be all, oh yeah, let's make it dark and hellish in the background and let's make this uh, green. Wow, that's really awful. Um, so let's make it something a little not, a little less awful. And this is why I like to work in HSB because it's easier to just think about, I want it to be brighter, I want it to be more saturated. So like, I want to have this be really fey and pink and really femi and girly colors now. And let's make this a kind of deep purple. You know, that's like the kind of mysterious red feminine kind of pinky palette that I've got going on here. And again, that was in a matter of seconds. I didn't have to go into these two overlapping gradients that I have in the legs that are actually several shapes. I don't have to worry about the fact that all of my, almost all of my layers are locked off so I can't accidentally select them when I don't want to. Um, and it's just a good thing overall. The other thing that you can do with it is this is a page of the comic I've been working on, as you might know. Um, if you look at this, you notice that I have two colors, two swatches, and I have several swatches that are the same. See, if you look here, this one is tone one. This one is also tone one, as is this one. And this is just a way of saying that, hey, I know I'm going to be making lots of objects that are 75% of that, and 50%, and 25%. Sadly, if you select this and change it, it won't change everything that you drew in 25% of Tone 1. But, again, if I decide that I don't like this brick red and yellow color scheme, let's say I want it to be, oh, black and red, I can do that in five seconds and it picks all of these colors and changes. I've got lines, I've got art brushes using these color, I've got solid shapes, I've got translucent shapes, I've got gradients, I've got everything you can do in Illustrator going on in this. And I can change it in as long, in as little time as it takes for Illustrator to redraw it. And sometimes I will change the color at the very end of the drawing. You know, I'll do the entire drawing and it's done and then I say these colors, these colors haven't really come together. I need to change them and I can without having to think and worry about selecting stuff at all. 
Global color swatches are fucking awesome and you should use them. That's it. See you next time.